incredible piece of machinery. She'll do zero to 103 seconds flat. And I got the keys in my pocket. It's been a long, hard haul getting here. But was it worth it? Was it really worth it? I was pretty sure it would be. That first day in Pensacola. Hey, Mac. Which way to aviation officer candidate school? Take a left at the Y, check in building 626. Thanks. Pensacola. Hey, maybe I'll get my Phantom today. Hmm. Didn't know they had Marines stationed here. Hiya, Sarge. Where do I check in to fly? Lock your body up. Lock it up. Get your heels together. Roll your shoulders back. Roll them back. Hey, wait a second. You're making a big mistake. Hello. No one spoke to you yet. What is your name, lad? John Macklin. No, eh? no, no. Sir. Sir, it's the first word out. My God, he must be mistaking me for someone else. Sir. Doesn't he know I'm an aviation officer candidate? Yeah. He knows it. That is how you sound off, lad. You will precede every sentence with the word, sir. You got that? Yes, sir. Now, what is your name? Sir, my name louder, is... Louder, louder, you will speak in a loud and distinct voice. You got that? Yes, sir. Get your heels together, get your thumb along your child to see me, get your eyes off me! What difference get does it make me. how I talk? Foxfire, this is 201, have PLC failure. Request emergency landing, over. On the flight deck, got a phantom in trouble, a phantom in trouble. Rig the barricade, rig the barricade. 201, understand you have a PLC failure. I'll have a ready deck as soon as possible. Keep it overhead. It'll be about three minutes before we get the barricade rig. We'll have to fly it right on speed, center line right on speed. I want you to dump down to 34,000 pounds. Make sure your flaps and slats are out, your gears down, your tail hook is down. Now this is 201, Roger. I am your drill instructor. While you are here, you will do exactly what you are told. When you are told, and you will not question, people, you will not question. They tell me I gotta have a college education to fly. Then this Neanderthal tells me I'm not supposed to ask questions. What kind of crap is that? Two zero one, punch out. Hey, Lieutenant, what happened? Listen, when the air boss hollers punch out, you don't ask questions. First man, turn around. Turn around, I said turn around! Get back, get back, get back. We just spent 45 minutes in that classroom teaching you people proper office entry procedures. Now, you people down there, you keep your eyes on me. You do exactly what I do, and you watch me. Now, get back. Get back! This is the way you approach this office. Get your eyes over here, lad! Your shoulder's four inches from the bulkhead. Now look down here. Look down here. Your toes are on line with this hatch. You will take one step forward. Execute a right face. Now look over here. Look over here. You're going to pound this pine three times. Three times. You'll be told to enter. Enter. Now you're going to keep your head and eyes. Look over here. Look at me. You're going to keep your head and eyes straight to the front. You will use your peripheral vision to determine who called you in. At this time, you will enter. Now, what kind of Mickey Mouse precision is this? What the hell has it got to do with flying? Flight quarters, flight quarters, man on flight quarters, baby. One towel bone. Check them out. Full pair of dress trousers. Get the right sizes. One pair of dress shoes. Hurry up, hurry up. Get over here. I said get over here. Look over here. You people look down at this rack. Look down. Like I said before, when you fold your skivvies, people, you're going to fold them exactly six by six. Six by six. Oh, wow. This is ridiculous. Six inches. So it's a little off. Who cares? You probably think that's a good sign, don't you? But look at that. Take that shoe. Take that shoe. Look at all that. Look at all that. Oh, look at that. Square it away. Hurry up. Square it away. Damn it. This is degrading. I came here to fly. 
Not to detail the soles of my shoes. Later on, all this is going to come to you, but we're talking about your life, Macklin. Attention to detail, lad. Attention to detail. Attention hey, Jerry, did you notice the loose screw on the landing gear? You mean this one? That's it. How about taking care of it? Yes, sir. Right away. It wasn't that I was particularly dumb, but it did take a while to catch on to what it's all about. I mean, there's no one who's going to explain it to you. Like PT. You wonder why the heavy emphasis on physical training. Well, I guess you won't really understand it until you've got your butt strapped to a high-performance aircraft. Only a guy in top shape can take this kind of punishment. And you wonder why there's such a stress on teamwork. Sure, we're all individuals. We've been taught that from the cradle. But here, if one guy's in trouble, hell, we're all in trouble. That's a tough point to get across, but it's the backbone of aviation. One, two, three, never wait, man! This is totally on set! No way! I suppose this is yours, Macklin. Well, I tell you what, right now, Macklin, you are screwed up. One man is screwed up, Macklin. You are We've got to learn to function as a team, to help each other. Even if all we're allowed to offer at times is encouragement. Hey, Macklin's in trouble. Yeah, let's help him out. Now, don't get the idea that it's all muscle and sweat and marching. We actually spend about half our time in class. But you keep asking yourself if it's worth it. I mean, you've got to put up with an awful lot of crap. No, it isn't candidate Macklin. Sure, if a guy wants to fly, he can stay a civilian. In three years, he'd get maybe a few hundred hours in a Cessna, if he could afford it. But in the Navy, you'll probably log up to a thousand hours in the same length of time and get paid for all of them. Plus, getting the finest flight training and most advanced aircraft in the entire world. First thing you want to do, sir, is make sure the hips are all the way back into the seat. Next, reach up and grab a hold of the chest strap. Strap one side at a time, then we'll do the opposite side. Spread your thighs all the way apart. Bring your feet forward. Reach up and grab a hold of the face curtain handle. One, two, fire! But you gotta hang in there. Because it's 11 and a half weeks of pure pressure before you even touch an aircraft. Oh, stop there, my blood. What are you looking at over there, lad? I suppose you know all of this, don't you? What is over there? After a few weeks, a strange thing happens. Without being aware of it, you begin to get with the program. It usually starts small, like one of your roommates polishing everyone's shoes, because he's good at it. Yeah, if you finally show up. Let's go and get this one over here. Maybe a couple of other guys are making up all the racks, because they do a better job. And you? You're shining everyone's brass. You don't even realize it, but you're a team. And in a weird, perverse sort of way, it starts being fun. You've made up your mind, you're not gonna let the bastards grind you down. Hey, here he comes! All right, class, look sharp! You're ready to take all they can dish out and still ask for more. Fast cadence, delayed cadence, fast cadence, count! And you begin to wonder what happened to that caveman you met the first day. It's called excessive oil. Take your silicone rag, hit it the next time you come out. And then finally, unbelievably, you're ready for flight training. The guys that chose to fly as navigators, radar or electronic officers, begin a five-week basic course of naval flight officer training. The rest of us, the guys that are going to be pilots, 
we start five weeks of primary flight training. Now, whether you fly props, jets, or helicopters depends on your preference, your individual performance, and the needs of the service. So is it worth it? Well, every man's got to decide for himself. Hello, Mr. Backlund, good luck. As for me, the answer is yes. No, not yes, but hell yes.